The twins search to affirm domesticity and at the same time to provide women with paths to independence took odd twists and turns in the post-Civil War period. We started looking at the post-Civil War period with the story of an anonymous worker who complained that she could not speak for herself lest she be accused of being unwomanly. Let's end this section with a story that should remain with us. Myra Bradwell studied law by clerking with her husband, a successful Illinois lawyer. Denied permission to take the Illinois bar examination in 1869, she went to court to plead her case. Myra Bradwell could probably have passed that examination easily. She'd been working for and with her husband for many years. So she sued, first in the Illinois courts, and then she appealed to the United States Supreme Court. In 1873, the Supreme Court turned her down. States, according to the justices, had the right to define person as they wished. Accordingly, a state had no obligation to provide women with equal protection of the laws or due process. It might, with impunity, deny women, especially married women, the right to a job. Justice Joseph Bradley sharpened the point, elegantly articulating his commitment to an ideology of separate spheres, he wrote, the natural and proper timidity and delicacy which belongs to the female sex evidently unfits it for many of the occupations of civil life. And as if to hammer the nail in, he continued, the constitution of the family organization, which is founded in the divine ordinance as well as in the nature of things, indicates the domestic sphere as that which properly belongs to the domain and function of womanhood. In short, the court refused Myra Bradwell permission to practice law because she was a woman. She lost her case, but the court that turned her down articulated for us a lucid explanation of the disadvantages that women faced in the wage labor force and in seeking political participation.